Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV, and I'm back with an update on the SOK battery that uh, I uh, gave you a look at it about a month or so ago and gave you my initial review. So I'm back now that I've had a chance to uh, use it in the rig for a little while. And also in this video, I'm going to take it right apart and give you a more in-depth look at it. And we're going to do a few tests. I'm going to do a capacity test, and also I'm going to test uh, some of the voltage drops on the internal uh, fixtures in there and also check for heating stuff like that and then come back with my overall impression of the battery so let's get to it oh by the way if you missed the first uh, video I'll have a link in the description so you can check that out Ridge a bit we'll go up to right around 52 amps let's see how many amp hours we can get out of this battery at that kind of current draw Okay, so we've just passed the 50 amp hour mark, and we've got 12.58 uh, volts on the terminal still. Okay, right around 19 amp hours left. And we're still drawing over 50 amps, 53 right now. And the battery posts measure 12.32 volts. Okay, getting down near the end, so maybe we'll give you a little time lapse of the very end. We're down to 12 volts on the battery terminals and 7.5 amp hours, or 7.4 percent out of 100. Still putting out 54 amps. Okay, well it looks like technically you can probably get 100 amp hours out of it before the BMS is going to shut down in the battery, but really in my tests, this is a 50 amp test, I did one lower amperage test about 10 or 15 amps, and after about 95 amp hours used it starts to uh, drop so much in voltage that it kind of becomes useless for an inverter or anything like that or anything in an RV running. So I would call it to 95 amp hours of usable um, capacity in that, which is still pretty good. A lot of the batteries are like that. Even the Lion would start to roll off once it got really down low, the voltage would drop. I think the Lion maybe was a little bit better. Um, probably has a little bit better BMS in this one, but still, this one's only you know around 600 bucks, so quite a difference. Anyway, I'm going to take this apart now, charge it back up, and maybe we'll do some uh, load testing on it. I'll put, uh, maybe take out about 80 amps and start looking at some of the voltage drops across the wiring and the BMS in there, just out of interest. And then maybe we'll pull it apart even further and have a, a deeper look inside the battery for you. Okay, so I put an 80 amp load on the battery. See on the clamp on there. And I'm going to do some uh, voltage drop checks on various places in the battery. Okay, let's go across the top pins. 12.46. And across the battery itself, 12.68. Go across the BMS. So it's dropping point, oops, point one four three, and across the wiring, it's dropping point zero two seven, and the positive here, point zero three seven. Point zero two four. Let's go across the bus bar. Point zero four nine. Point zero two nine. Point zero five one. So the biggest drop is actually across the BMS.
0.120. Now I'll let that run a while and then I'll feel and see uh, what in there might be heating up, especially these bus bars. Okay, so I'll let that run for about a half hour of drawing 80 amps. And frankly, nothing is hot. Bus bars are barely warm to the touch. Cables barely warm. And there's a little bit of heat from the BMS, but uh, just enough to tell you that it's warm, not hot at all. Most of the heat is actually on my uh, jumper cable connections here. They're not just attached, I actually screwed them down on there, but you know, that's the, probably the weakest part <laughs> of the system is this cheap uh, inverter. But anyway, it's a pretty good sign drawing 80 amps like that for quite a while and not much heating at all in the battery. So now that I've completed all the testing on this SOK battery that I'm going to do, I thought I'd pull it apart and give you a little deeper look at what's inside. These are the cells here. And there is a, some markings on there. Maybe I can zoom in and get you a look at that. Get good light on it there. There we are. So 3.2 volt, volts, 320 watt hour capacity. Some other numbers on there as well. So what connects them, these little nuts here, and then this is the bus bar, so they are awfully thin. I kind of scratched at them, I didn't get through to any copper. Not sure what they are, maybe nickel or something like that. Seem pretty thin to me though, but that's what they got in there. In the case we got rubber padding all around and on the bottom and as well on the top so these are really uh, locked in place in there they don't go anywhere and then under here is just empty so that's pretty good as far as uh, cooling because it is a, a metal box I think uh, it would cool better than, than say a plastic box be able to conduct uh, the heat out of the box Next, let's pull off that uh, battery management system and have a closer look at it. Okay, I got the BMS off, and there does appear to be a number down there. Zoom in, let you have a look at that. I know some of you guys like to cross-reference stuff. Anyway, I can't go too much further with it. Pull this... Uh, metal case off and this thing is basically screwed on there but it's also stuck I don't want to peel off whatever adhesive they have holding it onto this metal but that's probably a little bit of extra uh, heat sinking for the BMS look inside there So there you go. I have to say overall it's been a good battery for the money. Uh, it goes for around 620 sometimes probably get it on sale for cheaper. Uh, like I said before I really like the case design. I like the fact that you can work on things yourself and pull it apart quite easily if you need to change anything that goes wrong. Um, it is a lower priced battery so it's not quite as good as some of the other top brands. Um, in my testing I found that the, the useful capacity was about 95 amp hours. After that um, it dropped off pretty quickly. If you tried to pull any heavy loads in the last 5% uh, the voltage would drop down. You wouldn't be able to power the inverter like it, like it got demoed in, 
in uh, the video there. But overall, it's a decent little battery. Um, I used it for the month and it powered everything fine. It charged up through my solar system fine. Uh, it, it didn't charge with my uh, OEM charge converter, but I've explained that in the past why that won't do lithium batteries properly. So I can't fault the battery as far as that goes. Uh, anyway, I don't really need this battery. Um, I already have the, the three line energy batteries and I don't really want to add this to them and start to mi mi mix batteries that are different brands and stuff. So I've decided I'm going to include this in my big giveaway I'm having. Once I hit 75,000 subscribers, which isn't too far away, I have some goodies to give back. Uh, and one of them will be this battery. I'm also thinking of um, a Jackery 500 box that I have kicking around. Uh, tire pressure monitoring system, uh, a couple of uh, rear view camera and a dash cam. So there's going to be lots of goodies at the big $75,000 mark. And so stay tuned for that. Uh, hit the bell notification if you and subscribe if you want to know when that's coming up. But sometime after $75,000 to be the big giveaway. Till next time, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Cheers, folks.